Father God, please help me to speak this message in your truth, in your spirit, with your word. Please let me be faithful to your words to me, Jesus. Please speak out of me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I wish everyone would get rich, complete all their dreams, become famous, and realize that's not the answer. These were the wise words of Jim Carrey, the most famous movie star, a very funny comedian, famous actor. And yet he's telling his fans, his friends, his family, this. He's reached the top, and yet he doesn't see anything there. Let us look at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, verse 2. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. King Solomon had reached the pinnacle, he'd reached the top, he'd seen it all. He had a thousand women in his life. He was the most rich man in the whole of the country. In fact, even in the world. He was the most wise man in the world. The Queen of Sheba, the rich Queen of Sheba came from the ends of the earth to see him. And yet here we have Solomon saying, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Life is meaningless. Life is futile. What are we really living for? You know, some people live for the movies. Some people live for sexual immorality. Some people live for sports. Some people live for music. But friends, what do you live for? John MacArthur used to say that whatever you're living for, that's your God. So friends, don't tell me that you don't believe in God. Don't tell me that you're not spiritual. Don't tell me that you're not religious. For indeed, you actually do believe in a God. The idol in your heart's your God. Your phone's your God. Your girlfriend's your God. Your family's your God. Your friend's your God. But it's not Jesus, friends. It's not Jesus. Solomon says, What profit hath a man of all his labour, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. You remember Marilyn Monroe? Yes. Many people agree that she was the most beautiful woman in her generation. And yet, do you know what she said to Billy Graham? I don't need your Jesus. And a couple of weeks after, she was found dead in her apartment. She had it all, friends. Fame, glamour, everything. And yet, she was lonely, friends. She didn't have a living connection with Jesus Christ. What did Freddie Mercury say? He said, you could have it all. Remember what he had so many boyfriends, friends. He had so many lovers. And yet, he said, shortly before he was dying, that what he needed was a loving, living relationship with a person who loved them deeply. What about Jack Nicholson? In his youth, he called himself Jumping Jack, as he had so many girlfriends, so many sexual escapades. And now here he is in one interview saying, I'm afraid to die alone. Friends, we could reach the very top of this life. We could reach the very pinnacle, like Solomon, like Marilyn Monroe. We could be the most beautiful person, the richest, the most poorest. It doesn't matter, friends. We're all going to die, aren't we, friends? It doesn't change that, friends. Death is coming, whether we like it or not. It's going to snatch us, friends. What are we going to do about it, friends? You know, I live in a generation where people don't give a damn whether they're damned. People don't give a damn whether they're damned. How about you, friends? You believe in God, do you not? You go to church Sundays, you go to Bible studies, and yet there's no inward change, friends. There's no inward change in your heart. There's no oil in your lamp. So when the bridegroom comes, what will you say to him? What will he say to you? Oh, friends, 
how we want to be rewarded by God. We want the crown of righteousness, do we not? We want to run the race of faith, do we not? Or are we indifferent to it, friends? Are we indifferent to Jesus Christ? Are we indifferent to his kingdom? Friends, even outside of Hollywood, people normally are going to America, Britain, for the American dream, the British dream. And yet, friends, what they find is more suffering, friends. <laughs> more suffering. But yet, friends, this is, doesn't have to be the truth, friends. This doesn't have to be our reality. We don't just have to exist, but we can live, friends. We can live. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Christ Jesus. Do you know him? Friends, do you know him? Do you know this man who changed time, who split time in two from the year of his birth, friends? Do you know Jesus Christ who died for you? Tell me, friends, do you know him or do you not know him? Solomon, his final words. He said, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The generation of the elderly, they've been through life. They've seen through life. Most, if not many, have a hard heart. Hard heart. They say, oh, if God's real, why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there so much suffering? And yet, friends, these same people who say that don't believe in a devil. They don't believe in sin. They don't believe in sinners. So how can they say this? Why do they blame God for their own problems? For the sin that they caused? Why do they blame God for that? Who gave himself for their sin and pinned it on the cross? But they reject it. Solomon continues. He explains what the meaning of life is, friends. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Friends, you won't get away with your crime, with your inward rebellion against the living God. You won't get away with it. One day you will have to account to him. You will have to account to the just. You will have to account to the living God. What are we doing about it, friends? What are we going to do about our sin debt? We can't pay for it, friends, through works. We can't pay for it through religion, through other different faiths. Perhaps you go to Buddha, you ask him, how do I get rid of my sin? Buddha would say, life is suffering. Life is suffering. How does that help you, friends? We already know that life is suffering. What's the solution to the suffering, to the pain of existence? What's the solution? Then you go to Muhammad, and he says to keep the law, keep the religion, keep the rituals, keep the ordinances. And yet there's no assurance, friends. There's no assurance. There's no assurance. How about Hinduism, friends? Karma. Oh, friends, that's not much good to us, friends, about how we can deal with our sin. How can we deal with our sin? That's the real issue, friends. That's the real kernel, friends. That's the real answer that must be answered. What shall we do with our sin, friends? Who shall we take it to? Who shall we take it to, friends? Who can pay for our sin debt? Who can pay for our transgressions? And yet, the word of God, the Bible, says that there is one man who can... And his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. Do you know him, friends? Are you tired of existing? Are you tired of just living day by day? And then at the very end of your life, going into oblivion? Friends, you want to make a difference in this life? You want to have a legacy, friends? I like the story of Ruth. Does anyone like the story of Ruth? You remember Boaz? How his name is written in the book of life. But how about Ruth's closer kinsman, her other relative that was supposed to redeem her? You don't say much about him, do you, friends? He's not even mentioned, friends. You see, the disobedient friends, the people who don't follow God, are forgotten, friends. They're lost. 
Never to be told about again. Never to be talked about again, friends. Ruth's family member was forgotten, friends. And yet Boaz's legacy lives on in Jesus Christ. Praise God for that fact. And how about Naomi's daughter-in-law? Orphaz, how about her, friends? Ruth said to her, go back, serve your idols. And that's it, that's the end of her story, friends. You don't hear about her ever again, friends. But Ruth, the girl who stayed, the girl who stayed with Naomi, what happened to her? She's part of the Lamb's Book of Life. She has a legacy. Jesus Christ is her descendant. So friends, you want to make a name for yourself, friends. It would be best to serve the living Jehovah. To serve the living Yahweh. Because otherwise, friends, we'll be forgotten. Our names will be dragged down into Sheol, Hades, Gehenna. Never to be talked about again, friends. Never to be talked about again. You think about so many people in hell. John Weir once said to me that there's a national anthem in hell, friends. And I said, what is a national anthem? He said, a national anthem in hell is Frank Sinatra's My Way. The karaoke classic. My way. I did everything my way. Not Christ's way. Not the Holy Spirit's way. Not God the Father's way. But my way. Me, me, me. My, my, my. I, 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 I. The sin of Lucifer. The pride of life. What's in the middle of sin? I. What's in the middle of Lucifer? I. I. My way. Friends, we need to be humble. We can't do things our way. We need to do things from now on God's way. You want to live forever, friends? You want to have eternal life? Then put your faith and put your trust in the living Jesus. Come to him, friends. Or you labour and are heavy laden and he shall Give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28. Amen.